In terms of computer architecture and instruction set, there's two that we usually cover. That's x86 and ARM. We also have Z and Power, but the other one that people talk about is RISC-V. We've had a few videos of RISC-V on this channel. However, if there's one conversation that keeps coming up, it's all about RISC-V at adoption and when it's going to take over the market. One of the key barriers to RISC-V adoption has simply been consistency. One of the dangers of having such an open source specification is that everybody's going to take it and do what they want with it. They're going to put in custom extensions. They're going to include this and not include that, which makes the fragmentation of the ecosystem massive. It's something that ARM doesn't necessarily have to deal with because most ARM players are running off the shelf ARM cores. Also, ARM has been through this. They've been through the fact that there has been fragmentation in, for example, the server space. When we had eight or 10 players designing hardware, but they're all a little bit different. In that space, they come up with SBSA level three, a sort of standardization layer that meant that as long as if all the server players targeted uh, SPSA level three, then there would be a common platform to enable a software ecosystem that everybody in that space could build upon. Yes, there was still room for customization beyond um, just simply adding in what you need to if you had specific customers that wanted this, that, and the other. As long as you had the architecture license, you could add in whatever you felt was needed in your top in, in your top to bottom ecosystem if you had control of the full stack. However, with the standardized base, it meant developers who weren't tied to one design, one, archite one architecture, one microarchitecture, as long as they went for the base level, their software could be supported across everyone that, were use that was using that SPSA level three. We've been waiting for this for RISC-V for quite some time. Part of the fragmentation is because the standardization layers, aside from the base instruction sets, just simply weren't there. And even if they were there in some small way, not everybody was signed up to it. So the march to bring about those standardization layers has been a long and difficult one. So today, RISC-V International is announcing the RVA23 profile standard ratification. That means they now have a generalized profile aimed and targeting more performant applications. This provides that base that we've been waiting for. Uh, I remember speaking to the CEO of RISC-V International a couple of years ago now, Callista Redmond, about this. And it was clear from speaking to her that they saw the need for it coming. It's just taken a while to get there. RISC-V International, they claim, has over 16,000 developers and 80 plus working groups. So getting them all to agree on things has been a difficult slog. But the website now lists that this standard is uh, free for people to go and see and for people to use. Uh, so any chip designers out there can target RVA23 profile, the standard profile, and any software vendors can target it and it will ensure compatibility across all the chips that supports at the bare minimum that standard. Again, customization can come on top, though in order to use that, you obviously need to own the ecosystem um, or provide the ecosystem for a client in order to do that. Now, the two big things that RVA23 the RVA23 profile adds to this, which I think are important, is security uh, in the form of uh, hypervisor support. One of the things that uh, enables a good amount of security these days is simply the ability to abstract away from the metal any code. And to do that, you need hypervisors and virtual machines. So enabling uh, hypervisor support through RVA23 profile allows all the companies in that chain to do that. The other side is vector extensions. Now, if you've been following uh, some of the content that's been out on the web about RISC-V vector extensions, it's been a bit hit and miss whether people are enjoying it, people are liking it, whether it's included or not. If you design a chip for RVA23 profile, it has to, has, has to have a minimum basis of vector instructions to enable additional performance. Now, you could ask, was this added simply because, you know, AI doing AI things? However, we're seeing that even with like ARM Neon and 128-bit vectors, that's still needed to help accelerate a good amount of workflow. So adding them into the standard profile here makes a lot of sense. If we go through to the website that has all this, the RISC-V technical specifications, I'll put a link in the description down below. 
we can see that the documentations of uh, the latest update of the ISA from May 2024 are here. And if you scroll down, you'll get to profiles. And this is where we get the RVA23 profile. There's an RVB23 profile as well. And then just simply the 2020 and 20, uh, the A20, the I20, and the A22 standards, which were kind of the precursors to all of this coming in March 23. But if we click um, the RVA23 profile, it will go to a Google Drive link where you see uh, this document showing that it's in a rati ratified state. And it goes through the reasoning for doing this. You know, to, the uh, goal of RVA profiles is to align processor vendors targeting binary software markets. So software can rely on the existence of a certain set of ISA features in a particular generation of RISC-V implementations. So, you know, similar to uh, ARM V8, ARM V8.2, um, you know, this goes uh, into that in a certain way. I had the chance of speaking with um, Ventana Micro, whose executive team were actually involved in the creation of ARM's standardization. And so they were on the board of RISC V International when profiles were being discussed and enabled, and they're still there. So this defines the base, this defines the extensions, and then goes into exactly what you need. So if we're looking at page four here, it goes into user mode, supervisor mode, speaking about um, integer, atomic, single precision, double precision, compressed instructions. And it goes into you know details of what's needed if you want to be able to support uh, this profile. I'll let you guys go through uh, this documentation. Um, that, you know, there's a few pages, and then we can go into the community and also the GitHub repositories, um, as well as you know other non-ISA specifications. But we've been waiting for this for a long time. It means that RISC V can get a foothold in more sort of merchant silicon and merchant software providers rather than simply being you know purely embedded microcontroller plus esque type environments that we've seen it exist more so today. Um, this week is Risk Five Summit. I'm unfortunately not there. I had to get my visa renewed yesterday. But there's going to be a bunch of people doing a lot of announcements. I even know Ventana Micro has got an announcement in there about their latest generation high performance core, Veyron V2. Uh, so we'll see some information come out about that. But if you're at the show, please do get in contact with me and let me know what's going on, what highlights you're seeing, and perhaps we'll cover some more of them on the channel. If you like this content, there are multiple ways to support the channel. You can like and subscribe this video, and many thanks for doing so. There's also Patreon, which gives you access to our Discord. There's a merchandise store and a newsletter, links in the description. For all of you who do contribute, thank you. You are keeping me well fed.